Anthony Hartwig here, YSN exclusive. We have an old familiar friend of YSN, been on YSN a lot, but not in a while. It's been a minute, considering all the uh, Cardinal Mooney alum and current YSU Penguin joining us. Chet, thanks so much for uh, coming back. Come back to YSN for a minute. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. You got it. We, we got you on because a couple of weeks ago, uh, your former high school head coach, uh, Coach Reinhardt, announced that he was going to retire after 33 years of service at Cardinal Mooney under the softball program. And uh, we won. They, they get one of his great, great players, one of the 16 players that uh, he had that went on to play the next level on to talk this a little bit about his legacy and what he's going to leave for Cardinal Mooney. My first question for you, Chet, when you got the news that, that Coach Reinhardt was going to be leaving the program, you probably got it before anybody else did, to be honest. What were some of your first emotions and some of the first things that came to mind when you knew that this was going to be uh, Coach Reinhardt's last year with Mooney? Yeah, so it was a lot of emotion. Definitely um, excited for him to enjoy his retirement and enjoy what he's worked so hard for, but very sad in the fact that, you know, he's been there for 33 years. He's built a winning program with a lot of great players that have come through. Um, so it definitely, it does stink to see him leave, especially before my sister gets there, because hopefully my little sister, Gracie, will be attending Mooney. Um, she's going into her eighth grade year. So I always wish he would have got to coach the both of us, because when I was there, Gracie was just a little kid bouncing around, running around the whole time. And she always said, can you wait for me? Can you wait for me? And I thought he was going to do it, but that was a little bit, you know, heartbreaking for that. But he's going to go. He's going to do big things. So I'm excited for that. You said winning program, and you mean it. 31 out of the 33 years that Reinhardt was the head coach, Cardinal Mooney finished with a winning season. Uh, what do you think it is about him and, and the coaching staff he obviously put together that made that program so consistently good throughout three decades? Yeah, so, I mean, it's just like the everyday in and out grind that was established the first day that we had practice. Um, Reinhardt and Coach Stickle, um, have been there for a while. They've coached alongside each other. So when we came in, it was just kind of like the culture that I adapted to. And then I was fortunate enough to have my dad on the staff as well as Wes Chandler. So those four just constantly pushing us every day, um, starting with the little things in practice and then that translating into games definitely shows um, his record over the past couple years. Let's talk about first impressions with Coach Reinhardt when you first met him and you first kind of were getting to know him and build that bond with, with your high school coach. What were some of the first impressions you had of Coach Reinhardt back in the beginning of your journey? Yeah, so my first impressions, uh, I remember I shadowed at Mooney, and for the first couple years I was so shy and I didn't talk, and he would always ask me if I was mute, do I talk, am I like, why won't you talk? I was like, I do, I'm just shy, I guess. But I also had him as my teacher, so then I was able to open up a little bit more, and then I got to see um, the teacher side of him as well as, you know, the co the hard coaching um, side of him as well. But I remember uh, on my visit, he was just super excited, super welcoming, and was like, we hope, you know, you choose Mooney, because at the time I was back and forth between Mooney or Ursuline. And then I waited, you know, a week before school started to find <laughs> decide where I wanted to go. But I wouldn't change the decision I made for the world. So, let's talk about that decision. What what was the selling point that that Reinhardt gave you? What was the tipping scales that uh, made you make Mooney that call? Um, you know, it was just kind of like the atmosphere when I got there. It, everyone was so welcoming. Um, on my shadow day, I got to meet a lot of the players. Um, a lot of the girls I went to St. Charles, so a lot of my friends were going there as well. And I don't know, just the facilities were a little different. I got to tour the armory and the Ron Stoops baseball, baseball and softball facility. So I got to go in and see that. And then um, just like the other programs, too, I was going to go and play basketball. So getting to meet, you know, at the time it was Coach Wilson um, and Coach Paxson and then eventually turned into Coach Baker. So just, again, the atmosphere of the people and the Mooney family, it's, it's a real thing. So. That was, I think, my biggest selling point. We said at the top of the interview that 16 players under Coach Reinhardt eventually went on to play at the next level, including you. Um, from your experiences with him as a coach, what were some things that he did to really prepare you for what it was going to take to play softball at the next level? 
Um, it, a lot of it is just mental toughness and really he allowed me to be confident in myself. So although I did have a couple um, great high school seasons, he always was just like in my corner no matter what. Good days, bad days. Always just told me to be confident, be myself. And I, I committed to YSU the beginning of my sophomore year. So freshman year, it was a little bit um, hectic thinking where I want to go to school, what I want to do. And he was just, he always just grounded me, telling me, Chet, you're good enough to do this. Um, pick a place that's going to feel like home, that's going to, you know, make you be the best player that you can be. And he would always just, you know, have talks with me, make sure I was, you know, in a good headspace. And, you know, when I finally committed, it was just like a huge relief. And it was nice, too, because I get to play for my hometown, which is even better um, than, you know, going far away and having no one come watch. So that was big time. Now that you're all the way down to your last year at YSU, you've gone through a whole career as a Penguin. Um, what are some of the things that you look back on and, and are thankful that he taught you as lessons that you still lean on as a Division One athlete at, at Youngstown State? Um, again, the biggest thing he taught me was to be confident, to trust my stuff and to not doubt myself, my preparation and everything that I've worked hard for. So even on, you know, some bad days, some rough days when you're not hitting the ball and this, that and the other, he would always just remind me that you're right where you're supposed to be, you're where your feet are, um, and just make, you know, make sure to just be you. He always reminded me to have fun. He would always tease me in class. He would always ask me, are you mad? Are you mad? It was like the biggest thing that would actually make me mad. And sometimes he would want me to be mad because he was like, oh, maybe you'll hit the ball today or, you know, just kind of be funny and stuff like that. He is a really big jokester and has – very a very good character to him so I never really took anything he said like funny wise or anything like that too seriously because I know it was always sarcastic always joking I mean I had like 500 different nicknames but his most famous famous one was can change up because I think three out of like my five or six strikeouts were on change up so yeah I've had a couple different uh Nicknames going through, but that was definitely the most. Uh, just, just six. That one's stuff, yeah. it's, it's a flex. It's a flex, Chad. It That's is. What it is. Um, <laughs> when you think about things that you said, we're talking about things that Coach Reinhardt said. Is there anything that you think that throughout your throughout your high school career, he kept telling you that never really clicked, or you never really got, or you never really understood, like exactly what he was trying to teach you until you know you got older and you got into college softball and you start to realize maybe coach Reinhardt was really right when he was saying this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing was just him telling me to enjoy it. So even on, like I said, and it's tough and you know, you're just like, why am I doing this? This is, this is awful. He just always reminded me like, chat, you're good enough to be here. You're good. At this like, be confident, trust your abilities. And I think it's thing that he could have ever taught me because I'm going into my fifth year at YSU. You know, I've been granted the fifth year, so it's not a lot of kids take people want to do it, but I want to do it just to finish my career. And Barton. I'm going to do five years out of the program, five years out of Cardinal Mooney, but you have kept very good eyes on the program. You still support it. What kind of things make you kind of proud that you are still able to go and represent Cardinal Mooney and support that program, support the girls that are going through it? Yeah. So any chance that I get to, like I said, the Mooney family is real. Coach Reinhardt is out. It was never, you know, a doubt. If they were going to play, you know, I would be there. Um, especially now next year, since he won't be there, I'm sure he'll be at some of the games. I'm sure he'll be in the stands. Um, and then I have one year until hopefully my little sister's there. And then, you know, I always say as one career is ending, another one's starting. So as I'm done, my little sister, Gracie, she'll just be coming up. So, We'll always be in the game, um, and I'll always be, you know, supporting Mooney softball. It's given me 
friendships and, you know, lifelong memories that I'll never forget and cherish forever. All right. Give me some of your favorite Coach Reinhardt memories that you've that you've accumulated over over your four year high school career. Um, OK, the first one, like I said, he would always ask all of us, are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? And none of us honestly would ever be mad. But that would instantly like be one of the things that would just put us in a bad mood, like being asked all the time. Are you mad? Are you mad? Um, he would see us in the hallways and do that, too. He'd be like, oh, are you mad? I'm like. No, I'm just going to class, you know. Um, the second one was, gosh, we were, where were we? Let me think. I don't even remember, but he was just screaming our record. Like, you know, we are 17 and two. We are a good team. Don't let anyone tell you guys different, you know. And we all just like never seen him yell like that. So we all just kind of started laughing because – I've never seen him like really get serious like that. Um, but it was pretty funny to see him like that. All right. Those are some off the field memories that you have with Coach Reinhardt and Mooney. What about some on the field uh, career memories that you'll never forget putting on that Mooney uniform and playing for Coach Reinhardt? Yeah. So I think honestly, my top memory is winning districts my sophomore year. That, that team, that year, that atmosphere was just so incredible. Um, we were losing, and then we ended up coming back and winning it. Bridget Sweeney hit a home run. Katy Perry had an infield single that tied it or won it, something like that. But it was the crazy, one of the craziest games I've ever played in my life. Um, another favorite memory that always sticks out is my freshman year Ursuline game when I hit a home run at Borman Field of Dreams. He was so excited for me, um, especially because, too, I was going to go to Ursuline. So it was just kind of like the icing on the cake for that. Um, but, no, he was so excited for me, screaming. We won that game. It was a really close game, too. I think we were winning. Then they came back because, I mean, they had a dominant pitcher, Jordan Keneally, who's one of, you know, my good friends. We played um, travel ball against each other for a couple years. And then, you know, they also had a stud catcher, Gia Calderon. So it was just always a good game. But I do remember that. And then – uh, they walked me to get to Kayla. Kayla hit a single, and I was the game-winning run. So I remember that. That's definitely a core memory that sticks out, too. All right. Like you said, you had him as a teacher as well. Uh, what were what were some things that you thought were similar and then different in his teaching styles and his coaching styles? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Honestly, he's, like, the same. He is. Like, he treats his – his students exactly the way he would treat his players. I mean, he is just a super funny, like, you know, type of guy. He treats everyone like the exact same. He treated, like I said, the students the same way he would treat his athletes. Always funny. I was joking around, always sarcastic. Um, so I really, you know, I don't see much difference there. He was, you know, kind of the same with that aspect. It's going to be big holes to fill for, for Cardinal Mooney when they, when they have to hire a new softball coach. Whoever they decide to go out in and name the new head softball coach, what is some advice that you would give them on how to try to not be Coach Reinhardt, because no one can be Coach Reinhardt, but to do some of the things that he was able to do to nurture such a successful program? Um, I would say for the next person that steps in, it's just carry on the tradition um, no matter who it is, I feel like they're going to do a great job because they've had such a great role model. Um, you know, like I said, Coach Reinhardt has established winning seasons in like almost all of his years there at Cardinal Mooney. He's put players through college. He's He knows the game. Um, I would just say to continue doing what he's doing because, you know, in my eyes, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, but, yeah, I would just, you know, carry on the traditions, carry on the little things. And like I said, I'm sure he'll be at some games. I don't think we're going to, you know, keep him away for that long. But um, it'll be nice for him to relax and see it, you know, from a different point of view. But I'm sure he'll, uh, for whoever takes over the job, he'll still, you know, give his pointers here and there and talk about it at school because he would always um, make like a little write-up for the morning announcements and, you know, have everyone, like, everyone gets a little shout-out in the morning since – you know, that was like his thing. So I hope that they uh, still do that. Or if he, you know, comes to the game, maybe he can write one up as well. 
I'm sure he'll also be freed up to come to some of more of your games now this year as well at YSU. Um, we can't let you go without talking about your last year. Your last year at YSU, you're granted the fifth year. How excited are you to kind of lace it up for, for the Penguins one last time and to try to make uh, this last year, you know, the, the best it can be? You've already had so much success as a Penguin, both as a team and yourself personally. Yeah, I'm super, super excited. He better come to some games because now he has no excuse. Oh, Mooney was playing. Oh, no, no, no. No, now that he's not the head coach, I will, in fact, be emailing him every day. I will send him our schedule, even though he already has it, because he better be at some games. But, um, no, my last year at YSU, I'm just going to take it all in um, day by day. I'm super excited. Like I said, granted the fifth year. I'm the only one in my class who's taking it, which is a little bit bittersweet. But, again, I'm excited. I'm ready to get after it. Um, and I'm ready to do it one last time. What motivated you to to give it one last go? I mean, I know college sports is a grind. And, and you've either, even if you love it, even if you love the sport, you can love it as much as you want. It's a grind. It is a lot to deal with. What were some of the things that drove you and made you really want to go out there and compete one more season? Um, the biggest thing is my family. I, I've always said, you know, throughout the recruiting process, recruiting process, I wanted to go far away. I wanted to go far, but once I visited YSU, it was just instantly home. Um, my papa, which is my grandfather actually came, um, on my visit with my dad and I, so that was super awesome. And they're, you know, at every game, even if it's cold, they come, they sit in the parking lot in their cars. My parents are always here and my sister's family, friends, you know, every time I look back, you know, I always see someone that I know or someone that's there to support me in the team. So that was the biggest thing is just do it for my family one last time. Um, because without them, I wouldn't, you know, even be in this position to not only play, but, you know, have the opportunities that I did. So that's the most important thing is, you know, kind of playing for my family, playing for the people that got me here and, you know, just finishing one last time on a high note. All right, Kat, before we let you go, every time we have a next-level player come on, you know, YSN, we ask them to give our current high school students advice, especially if they're trying to play at the next level like you are. Recruiting is a lot different than it was when you were in high school. You committed your sophomore year. You can't commit that early anymore. And I know there were some players that we covered with you at YSN that committed before they stepped on the field to be a freshman. Uh, they can't do that anymore. you got to wait. So what are some, what's some advice that you give to these new – you know, up and coming softball players, a lot of talent we have in this area. What kind of what kind of advice do you give them as they're navigating the recruiting pool? The biggest thing I would just say is take it day by day. Don't, try not to stress about it a lot. I know it's a very stressful, hectic, and tough process, but you'll find your home um, no matter wherever it is. You know, whether it's Division One, Division Two, or Division Three. NAIA, whatever it may be, you'll find your home. You'll know once you visit, You'll everything will just click. So um, like you said, the recruiting process was much different. I was, you know, out at camps in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and doing all that stuff. It's so different now, especially with COVID, everything, you know, goes online. And a lot of girls are putting stuff on like Twitters and sometimes even TikTok. I see it, it pops up. But I would just say um, – you know, stay, stay positive with it. It's, it's a rough, rough process, but again, stay positive, stay calm. It'll all come. And like I said, once you find your place and you find your home, it's just like the biggest relief and to know that you did it, the people that helped you, you know, did it. It's, it's such a rewarding process too. It really is. Ken Rinaldi, we miss you so much at YSN. We miss covering you, but man, you're doing great things at YSU. Thank you so much for, taking the time to join us and talking to us about a fantastic uh, coach that is that is ending his legacy at Cardinal Moon. Yes, thank you so much. And Reinhardt, if you watch this, I love you. I'm grateful for you. And you better be at some games. I know you're going to watch this, so you better be at some games. Even if we have to roll the screen in front of him personally, we will make yeah. sure that he yeah. sees this somehow. If I have to come find you at Mooney, I'll make sure you're at some games. All right. Thank you again, and we'll see you soon.